Hi, my name is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog dedicated to building science and fine craftsmanship. A little bit of a provocative title today, Why Traditional HVAC Systems in Texas Suck. I'm in the attic of a brand new house. This is almost completed. This is actually not one of my houses, but this house is very typical of how Texas houses are constructed today. A little background on Texas. Most of the homes in Texas are slab on grade, meaning there's no basements. And so as a result, probably for the last 50 plus years, almost all the mechanical systems have been located up in attic systems. Uh, so you can see here, we're in the attic. We've got all the ductwork around us. Underneath us is insulation and below that is the house. So two reasons why it's a really bad and inefficient design to put your, your ducts up here in the attic. Number one, this attic is gonna get real hot. It's probably, 70, 75 degrees outside today, and this attic is at least 15 degrees hotter already today. So on a typical summertime day, this attic is gonna see temperatures of 130, 140, maybe more. Builders in Texas over the last few years have moved to uh, cool ply decking. If you can scroll the camera around, that, that's that silver face decking that you see there. That provides a radiant barrier, which helps bring the temperatures down a little bit but we're still gonna see temperatures in this attic in the summertime north of 120 degrees. The AC that's running through this ducts is probably gonna be 55 degrees. So we've got a, a delta between those two of well over 60 degrees. And the duct work, this is our six duct, which is pretty typical, is real thin. Our six duct has about this much insulation and that's about it. So in the summertime, if the AC has been off for a few minutes, the air inside these ducts is gonna be the same temperature as this attic, which could be 120. When the system first turns on, it's gonna blow that air into the house before the cool air behind it is gonna get there. We end up having a very inefficient system, and typically we're gonna to have to upsize uh, the size of the unit outside to cool this space and this house uh, by you know a quarter, a half ton, maybe more, just to overcome the inefficiencies in the system. That's the number one reason. The number two reason that no one ever talks about, and this is really the main thing, is when this system turns on, it sucks for the house. And what's happening is these ducts that are running outside of the air conditioned space have some amount of duct loss. My HVAC contractor, actually, uh, I have an independent testing, com uh, testing company do what's called a duct blast test, and we ensure that our ducts have less than 7% leakage, and that's for a really good install with typically mostly rigid metal and small amounts of flex duct. A more typical install of a flex duct in Texas, my guess is the leakiness on a brand new system is between 10 and 20%. An older house, uh, you know, houses built in the 50s, 60s, 70s have this exact same setup with the same type of flexible duct. Those could be 20, 30% loss or more. So if this unit behind me is, let's say, a two and a half ton system, which is a probably an average size system or, or maybe even a small system for Texas, it's probably gonna be blowing 1,000 CFM through the ductwork. And just for even numbers, let's say, best case scenario, it's 10% loss. If this is 1,000 CFM, we have 10% loss. We're losing 100 CFM of cold air out to the atmosphere, to this hot attic space. And then what's happening is it's putting a negative pressure in the house. In effect, we're sucking air out of the house uh, when we turn this system on. And what happens when we suck air out, we know that nature abhors a vacuum. So air is gonna infiltrate back into this house. If you put your hand underneath doors and windows, you're gonna feel a little bit of air infiltration every time this HVAC system turns on. You're also gonna see that on your ceiling. A lot of times ceiling registers have a kind of a stain around them. Uh, that's typically where some uh, air infiltration has happened around that duct boot. You're also gonna see that around electrical outlets. That's where a lot of the dust actually comes from in, a, in our typical houses, is from our houses going into negative pressure. So there's two very inefficient ways or reasons why we don't wanna put our ducts up in this hot, humid attic. Check out my other videos about how to make a conditioned attic, and please talk to your builder and your architect about how you can um, design your house and build your house so this ductwork is not outside of the conditioned space. One last thing, hang off me for one more second. If these ducts now are within the condition space of the house, if we, let's say, spray foamed up to the roof line or brought these ducts into a fur down on the ceiling below me and figured out a way to bring them into the condition space, then if this unit has 10% leakage or 12% leakage, it's not as big a deal because that air is leaking into the condition space, number one. And number two, we're not putting the house into a negative pressure situation where the house is always trying to make up that air that's lost. 
Thanks for joining me, everybody. And please, number one efficiency tip, bring your ductwork into the conditioned space of your house. We'll see you next time.